This video is sponsored by Dubia.com. Get 15% off with code GOHERPING. I cannot think of a better way to spend my evening than hate scrolling through Reddit. More specifically, r slash Crestigecko. It's a subreddit. You're in for a treat. Starting with this gem. This, truly this gem, which I checked. Uh, this account on Instagram has in fact deleted <laughs> this picture. I wonder why. If you don't know, uh, the gecko is shedding. It's being held up. And apparently it looks like it's being slightly strangled by its own shed, which you gotta wonder. If this is what they're doing with the animals on camera, I wonder what's going on behind the scenes. Great stuff. Good start in our crest to gecko. Now I don't I don't have the same opinion as everyone in this sub, believe it or not. Sometimes I have differing opinions. This post, someone's got their crusty with their dogs on another couch and the comments are not a fan. Mixing a reptile and giant dogs ain't a good idea. Uh, the original poster then responded, getting downvoted saying they aren't mixed and clearly I'm paying attention to her, which I kind of have to agree. I mean, we've seen the other Reddit videos, we've seen like beardies on dogs and uh, leopard geckos on cats and all these weird literal mixes where you're taking an animal and sticking on it. He's just hanging out on the couch with his crested gecko. I don't see the harm in here. I've got to defend this guy. It's literally a fine post. You know what? I'm about to it. I don't care if it's two years old and if the episode doesn't count, the deed is done. Oh, sob story. I woke up this morning to the sound of one of my geckos going psycho mode. He was running around his cage like a madman, so I turned on the lights to see what was happening. Turns out he dropped his tail. I've always been so careful while handling them. I never make loud noises or even play music. I don't use the vacuum cleaner nor the hair dryer near him. I'm, oh, I'm absolutely heartbroken. I've been not doing well the past few months and I'm not sure how I can recover from this. I feel like such a failure. This is so sad. This, th that's what they said. I'm just so sad. I cannot stop crying. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Who cares? Most Cresties, I, as I have to assume most Cresties drop their tail by adulthood. Now, it, when I sell Cresties, admittedly, if they have their tail, I raise their price by about 15 to 20 dollars because it's pretty common. I'd say the I'd say I would guess 50 50 Cresties drop their tail while being shipped. It's a bit more stressful and they just drop it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't affect their health. And then oftentimes the, the owners get upset when they receive it and they're like, I paid for a crusty with a tail. And I'm like, well, lucky for you, you paid a, an extra charge because it has a tail. And then I can refund them like 20 bucks. I feel bad for this person. There's so many people. There's such an interesting mix of people that stress over the little things that don't matter and vice versa. There's very few in between, I feel. I guess there's another example. Tiny bugs in Crested Gecko water bowl. Is this a concern? I, I think it's just springtails. I mean, it's kind of hard to see, but it's little white bugs, which in a reptile enclosure is probably springtails, which interestingly, if springtails were dangerous, we would be doomed as reptile keepers, okay? They spread. Like, I'll have enclosures that were never even near springtails as far as I knew, and then one day I look and there's an explosion of them. Now, they're just, they're considered cleaner crew. They just eat whatever, pretty much, but they don't harm your animal. And as part of oftentimes uh, bioactive setup. So uh, it's, yeah, it's like, kind of like how if you go to a reptile expo, I don't recommend bringing your own animal to it because it's like somewhat of a chance, depending on the show and where you are, that you're going to pick up mites there. So like when I go to shows, which honestly, I don't go to them anymore, but when I used to, what I should have been doing is like going, not bringing any animals, and when I get home, take off my clothes and take a shower. You should let like go in a hazmat suit, basically. Uh, and it's the same thing with springtails. It, it probably even more likely, the thing is it doesn't matter. So yeah, just a tangent about springtails, assuming they are, maybe it's something deadly. So before we continue, I've ordered insects over 150 times from dubia.com, and I hate them. I'm just kidding. I like them. I like them so much, in fact, that they're sponsoring this video. I've bought bugs from just about every place imaginable, but they became my go-to in 2016 simply because they're the cheapest and most reliable, and they have super fast shipping. Oh, God. The feeder insects are so lively and healthy that you could pretty much convince me they hand-raised every little bug from a little tiny baby. And this might come as a surprise, but 
they sell dubia roaches. But they've also got hornworms, superworms, mealworms, waxworms, black soldier fly larvae, and more. And if you need insects often, you can set your order as a subscription. The fact that they've reliably delivered literally tens of thousands of insects to my house is one of the key reasons I've been able to take in and rehome over 600 reptiles now. Every single insectivore I've owned in the past six years were raised, rehabbed, and fed bugs solely from dubia.com. And they didn't ask me to mention this, but they actually donated over a hundred thousand dollars last year specifically to reptile rescues so since you probably need some bugs go ahead i won't be offended you can pause the video you can place an order and you can get 15 percent off with code go herping when you go to dubia.com today or tomorrow it'll work tomorrow too they've seriously been such a vital uh website for me to order from and i'm always super happy with them so i appreciate them sponsoring the video and now back to the video all right, we, we got a meme, a reptile meme in particular. I see a lot of reptile memes thanks to you viewers, and I don't usually find them funny, but I actually like this one. Cresta geckos in the wild. I am a cunning and elusive creature. My impressive camouflage has led many scientists to believe my species was extinct for decades. I can survive weeks without a meal, and I'm quite well equipped to survive under the harshest conditions. Cresta geckos in captivity. I don't like the watermelon flavor. I accidentally ate dot. You know what? It's funny. I'm uploading a post in our slash Cresta geckos. I think it's funny. I'm not denying it. They are so cute. Wow, they're so creepy. Cresta geckos legitimately creep me out so much. This post got locked and downvoted because they're being cohabitated, which I'll admit, I don't know much about. Now, I haven't sold Cresta geckos to be cohabitated. I haven't cohabitated them myself, but I kind of thought it was okay. <laughs> I, I don't know if I assumed, I don't know if just someone told me. I guess I just assumed cohabiting female Cresties was like an okay thing, which is one of the many reasons I don't give advice on Cresty care. I just don't know uh, like enough details past just caring for them myself. So anyway, that's not the point of this post. The point of this post is I hate how when I turn on the light in the middle of the night because I need to go get a glass of water or something and I happen to walk past a Cresty Gecko enclosure and their massive bulging eyes are just black abysses. Ab Abyss? Black obese. What's the plural of abysses? And it creeps me out. And I don't like it. But nobody else cared about that. They just care that they were touching each other. Anyway, is this an okay setup for a couple months? I'm planning on breeding my Dalmatian or Harlequin with my friends, blah, blah, blah. So they want to breed their adult crusty with another adult crusty in a 10 gallon exoterra. A little higher than a standard test. So let's say an 11 gallon, which is about five gallons per adult crested gecko. Well, maybe this big if they don't have their tail, because it's not like their tail really needs any space. It's just going to fall off anyway, isn't it? Sometimes like, there's some, clearly some beef that's been happening, but I don't really know what's going on. And I just jump in the comments like, it's clear you're not going to listen. So I don't know if they were already been posting, but I like how they responded. I've had plenty of experience, but they just posted this asking for advice and they're like actually you know i don't want the advice i have plenty of experience i guess they're just looking for confirmation and then they don't get it and then they get upset i don't know i don't know i'm just scrolling through don't ask me anyone else have a gecko who likes to lick up other geckos pee this boy won't touch his own but loves other geckos pee in my years of reptiles i don't know i always sometimes i just ha i'm like i feel like i've heard every story of just general reptiles and general weird things they do but you know what i still get surprised it's great turns out geckos like to look up each other's urine sometimes but not their own <laughs> your gecko a freak <laughs> i've always stopped him anyways i've only seen it happen when i have him and other geckos out he's doing well health wise so i'm not worried just curious okay Cool. Thank you for sharing. I tried going to my local Petco and PetSmart, uh, but they're out of crickets. I took matters into my own hands, and it looks like we've got a bug vacuum. I used to have one of those bug vacuums. I sucked up every bug I could find as a kid. I wonder how many of them could have killed me. In my defense, again, I, I feel like I've said that many times and we're only a few posts in. In my defense yet again, I was like six, and the frogs were also wild caught because I'd go outside catch the frogs. And then I'd go outside and catch the crickets and I'd feed them to the frogs. So if they already had parrots, so they probably already had parasites is what I'm trying to say. And I only gave them double parasites. Here's my waterfall tank set up, live plants and fake plants. It's got a, so like a subadult crest, ju juvenile crestie, I guess. Uh, I wish this was a horizontal video, but we should be able to see anyway. I'm 
because it is absolutely massive. It's the biggest Cresta Gecko enclosure I've ever seen. Now, I didn't realize this, but there's actually two Cresties in here. This one, but yeah, I guess it's right there. Now, the comment section ain't having this enclosure, but you know what? I kind of like it. I'm sorry, but I have to address these points again. See, I, I feel like I'm missing out on some beef because apparently this is not the first time. One, the enclosure in general is too big for such a small gecko. What does that mean? No, it isn't. It, sure, it could be too bare, but I don't think this is that bare. It, could it be more full? Sure, yeah. But it's not too big, I don't think. It, it has a waterfall in the center. It's always going to be able to access water. Maybe add like multiple feeding spots in case it's like too scared to go. I mean, we just saw, we just saw this. Maybe the gecko is too scared to move three feet because it's in captivity. But what was I saying? I don't know. Anyway, the gecko needs vertical space, not hor There's plenty of vertical space. Why is it bad to have horizontal space? It's not like it's this tall, but this wide. It's this tall, but this wide. It's like a 24 inch exoterra, which most people agree is the standard for a single uh, Cresta gecko, or I guess only a single, because you're not supposed to go have them, as I learned. I don't know why I'm giving my opinion on this one. I didn't even know that, but it has vertical space is what I'm trying to say. Three, it needs way more hides and branches, etc. I, yeah, I can agree with that. Five times, and I would double it, though. And four, you shouldn't have more than one gecko in there. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, everyone says the whole tank is too large. It's just stupid. Is it a waste of time? Yeah, for me, it would be. Is it a waste of space? For me, it would be. But that's not for everyone. I think it could be perfectly fine set up. And the Cresty honestly doesn't look that bad. It looks fine. You know what? I'm defending this person, too. K.O. <laughs> what are... Can we get an instant replay of that, please? What were they trying to achieve? This looked deliberate. This motion is what I do when I have a stinky little crusty gecko on my arm and I want to get back in its stinky little enclosure because I nudge it and then it, it jumps. So they can't. All right, let's see what they said. Definitely didn't mean to incite contact. A potential breeding pair I introduced to gauge aggression. Yes, he will not be paired. He must suffer virginity as a consequence for his behavior. <laughs> I, th I mean, is this the way you do it? I don't know. <laughs> People ask me about Cresta Gecko breeding because I've sold juveniles. I didn't breed them. I just sold them. I just sold them for other people. I'm just the dealership, basically. I'm the reptile dealership. I don't know how to breed the Cresta Geckos. Don't ask me. Is this how you do it? Apparently so. It was kind of funny, but I feel kind of bad. My gecko has been sleeping for 72 hours? For some reason, my little guy hasn't moved an inch the past few days. He kind of just lays there. He hasn't even touched his food dish or water dish or pooped. He's been laying in the same position on his back for three days. How can I get him to be more active? Uh, I took this as just, I mean, an obvious, just kind of silly troll post, but the comments took it quite seriously. I mean, it's not, it's, it's kind of funny, I guess. I chuckled at the, he's been lying on his back for three days. What can I do to help him out? It, it, someone linked a checklist, okay? It is a checklist. It is a full article on how to tell specifically if your crested gecko is dead. I know people have trouble sometimes, like uh, maybe their snake died and they're half in denial and half just can't tell because not everyone knows what a dead snake looks like, but uh, death symptoms, not reacting to touch, <laughs> crested gecko not breathing, <laughs> pupils not reacting to light, bluish spot on belly, mouth wide open, bile leaking out. <laughs> I mean, okay, so many of these symptoms maybe could happen if it's alive, because who knows, like, uh, pupils not reacting to light, maybe it has brain damage or something from, from, like, maybe something like this gave it brain damage, but then it just says not breathing, like, I don't know, I'm just easily entertained today, okay. And I think we'll take a pause there. Thanks again to Dubia for sponsoring. Go ahead and place a bug order, uh, big or small, whatever you need. And you can get 15% off with code GOHERPING. We can revisit this subreddit in a few days. But with that, I think that's all we need to see for our own sake, at least. So hopefully you enjoyed. If you got other subs you want me to check out, just let me know in the comments. Also, I'm still reviewing enclosures on Instagram. A hashtag GARPING review. People still don't understand how to you how to do it. You go... you download instagram you log in you create an account unless you're banned like me and then you click post you take the picture or use the picture you have and you type hashtag go herping review and then you click post that's it don't tag me don't dm it to me don't email it to me don't call me don't leave a voicemail with the picture you just post on instagram with hashtag go review that's not even the series i don't know i'm mentioning that that's it for this video i'm alex and thanks for watching